Okay, so welcome to another event with the Dublin Coding School. And this time we're going to have a, a short uh, discussion on UX and UI design, which is user experience and um, user interface design. Um, and I'm joined by um, an expert speaker and also one of our, our lecturers, who will be one of the lecturers on this course uh, for Dublin Coding School, Stephen Coleman, who is a UX and UI designer from the Bank of Ireland. Uh, good afternoon, Stephen. How are you doing? Good afternoon, Luke. Great. OK, so look, just before we get going, I'll just uh, quickly maybe give a bit of background. So Dublin Coding School, if you haven't um, heard of us before, we're a an tech education provider uh, here in Ireland. We're um, also in three other countries across Europe. So we're a school for adults who are looking to either upskill or change their careers um, and move into the tech sector. We have courses in UX UI design, obviously, <laughs> but also in full stack web development, in data analytics, and um, also in automation and manual testing and cyber security. So those courses are offered by top professionals working in the field, such as Stephen, but also in our data analytics um, faculty of lectures. We also have two lectures from Bank of Ireland as well. Also, we have um, full stack web developer from Rent the Runway. We have data analyst from TikTok. So, that's across all of our, our various topics. Um, as well as the courses, we also have a career center and that's where we'll help um, graduates with their CVs, with their online presence. And we also send out their CVs to partner companies who tip us, when, tip us off when they have open roles. So it is a, a full service career change um, provider. So anyway, look at maybe a bit more of that at the end and how to contact us, but maybe I'll just kick off um, Tonight's discussion where we want to discuss a few things. We want to look at the role of a UX UI designer, what that entails, what, what they do day to day, um, but also look at um, design thinking, which is a whole way of working um, uh, or, or how, how these designers work. So Stephen, maybe I'll just start off. What got you into um, a career in design? Um. Well, a number of things, Luke. Um, my background was very much, um, I guess, you know, visual from the start, graphic design. Uh, and a lot of designers would have come from a graphics background. Um, it, is a, it is a benefit in certain uh, aspects. Uh, but, but what I, do, I did find myself personally that you will meet a lot of people with very diverse backgrounds um, in the UX field. UX, UI, CX, all of these terms uh, you would have heard if you are interested in a career in UX, UI. Uh, and basically each aspect of those will be, you know, it can be broken down into smaller parts like anything. Uh, UI, more concerned about user interface and how the, the sort of web app skills that you will pick up, you know, you, you will use a lot of your graphics backgrounds using similar tools. Uh, but in the UX world, it, it it sort of dives much deeper into the source of the function of the product itself. So it is uh, probably something that evolved in my own practice. Um, any web designers out there, anybody who's familiar with doing sort of, you know, I, I started off doing um, websites for a band that uh, I knew, uh, a couple of guys wanted a website, so I put one together for them. My brother, I did a website for him, for his business. And, you know, you kind of, you know, if you're in that world, slowly what happens is you begin to see industries that are looking to scale. So it's the, it's ob it's the obvious next step for any designer who's serious about um, uh, sort of developing their career to go into optimization for user experience. Very good. And so you mentioned there about building websites and all of that. And I know a question that, that comes up, and by the way, if anyone has any questions, please do write them into the, the feed underneath. Uh, for Stephen on UXI UI design. I know a question that comes up quite a lot, and maybe we'll just ask it straight away is, do you need to learn how to code to be a UX designer? Yeah, no, no, is the answer. Um, you know, you know, very often you'll see companies that will advertise for, you know, positions where they do ask you for code. Uh, and, and, and I think what that, that is, is basically they want you to understand how the system works, how you would develop something, uh, uh, just from, from a global understanding, because essentially very often your design gets translated to code, 
in order to build an app or a, a product. Uh, it could be a, a website, uh, you could be doing an interface, you could be doing something even more technical, uh, business to business or business to consumer, regardless of what the product product is, your, your ask as a designer is, is the most important part. So no, essentially coding is a, is a benefit if you, if you do understand code or if you, if you have developed or designed websites in the past, it's great, but no, it's not a pre, pre, prerequisite to uh, UX design, no. Okay, so maybe just, um, would you be able to talk us through, what is it, now you're obviously a UX UI designer at Bank of Ireland, uh, so on your, and you've worked at many other places too, so you've great experience. Just maybe talk it through for anyone watching who's thinking, if I do, if I do a course in this and get into this, what am I getting myself in for? So what is it yeah. like day to day? What, 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 what's your average day like as a, as a UX designer? Yeah, um, average day for me, um, I, well, currently at this point in time, I'm preoccupied with uh, a very advanced stage uh, development piece on the Bank of Ireland app, uh, which I, unfortunately I can't talk about in much detail, but um, what's happening on my day to day right now is very often you're liaising with stakeholders, uh, product owners and um, business analysts, and all of these people are um, working with developers to, to ensure that your designs are carried forward into the, uh, the, the, the essentially the deployment of the app and any new features that are going in there. So um, to, to, I suppose to elaborate on that, basically oh, this is a year's work that um, a concept that had developed from um, from basically from discovery into, and it sort of, sort of, you know, went through the entire process. Uh, very often with big teams, large teams, uh, various stakeholders, and uh, what would have taken maybe, which would have began possibly last uh, July, has now blossomed into a, a very elaborate piece of um, engineering to get to the point where it's very ready for market, almost ready for market. Um, so at this point in time, I, I liaise day to day with offshore developers uh, to ensure that they car carry out the code uh, changes that are necessary to ensure that my design uh, is fit for purpose and fit especially with customer in mind at all, it, at all aspects of uh, the design phase. So um, customer first in everything. Yeah. So so that's that's um, that kind of leads me on to my next question, which was obviously with UX UI design, it really is focused on on the customer and how they're using products, how they're interacting with products. Um, I know you mentioned before when we talked um, in a, a different time on a different call, we you talked about um, the importance of research, but also then testing with an yep. with customers. Do you want to maybe talk to people who maybe aren't? Um, aren't designers, they don't really know how UX design works. Talk, talk a bit about, you know, why research and testing is so important or maybe what that is in, in terms of- Sure. Design. Yeah, absolutely, Look, um, So um, with, any, with any concept or any design aspect, you know, when you take a design from, it could be anything, a website, it could be an app, uh, it, could be, it could be even, um, you know, any sort of product, you know, essentially, you know, uh, and I suppose another aspect of what we do is also sometimes entitled product designer. So you're not limited to digital to the digital space, but we we work uniquely in the digital space because there's such a high demand for products that are user centric right now. So um, I guess you know when you're going through a um, whether it be a website if, you, if it's customer facing, um, t you know very often you'll take a concept you you'll probably you know, do two or three different versions of, of what it is. You'll run a path with stakeholders in the company and then you'll come back and find some people like it, some people don't, and then you enhance it and then you continually iterate on that design. But what happens very often is, um, you know, there's a, there's a cognitive bias as, as well into design. So um, it could be yourself. You might think it's great. It could be ourselves. You might say, oh, well, we like our design. But until you put that in front of the customer and actually test that with the customer, you'll never really know what the customer wants from your product, you know. So it's very important at an early stage to test your product. Uh, and that's part of the sort of um, 
uh, the sort of diamond workshop uh, methods whereby you'll be taking sort of the early stage discovery aspects of your design, testing early, and they say test, uh, you know, uh, sorry, as a test early and fail fast, fail fast and fail often is what they say in the industry. Because if you don't, if you don't test your product, you'll never know if it's um, if it's adequate or if it's um, usable. Essentially, right? Yeah, no. We you did mention before how important it is. We've just had a question come through actually, which I'll just read out. So it's come from someone watching called Ollie Carmody, and they're asking him. Um, I've been working as a camera operator producer in the creative sector for about twenty years really interested in UX UI, but I'm concerned that my background and lack of experience might be an issue. So what would you think about that, Stephen? Um, that, that word, do you, do you think someone could jump into a course in this and, and, and start? Well, yeah, I mean, like um, camera operator. Um, well, first of all, like I, I would say that, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, I did with myself a little bit of production design <laughs> a while back. So I am aware of what camera, camera operators do go through. And very often you have to take back your footage and edit that on the computer. So no doubt you'll probably have some, some camera skills. You probably have some computer skills. Uh, and really, like, you know, if you think of any graphic products, you know, it could be editing um, samples down, it could be using Adobe products, for example, if you have experience in that space, well, it's, it's, not, it's not a million miles from, you know, using other products uh, to help you design tools that you'll find that will help you along the way. Every, every designer has to start somewhere. And we do understand this. <laughs> For me, uh, my familiarity with Adobe products was a great help. Uh, Photoshop, things like that in the beginning. Uh, you could even design with Illustrator and, and products like that. But very often, you know, the standard tools that you'll use in UX, uh, once you start into that, and once you maybe do a couple of online courses, it won't take you long to get up and running. Yeah, great. Thank you for that answer. And also, um, Ollie, just from our point of view, our courses are actually designed for for beginners. So whether it's the UX UI design course or web development, data analytics, all of our courses are designed for absolute beginners and we walk you through everything from the ground up. So you don't need any prior experience um, and we're not assuming that you have any knowledge when you come onto the course um, and we will train you right up. Uh, also, by the way, when you take one of our courses, you can do it twice. So what I mean by that is when you finish the course, which is maybe a month and a half, two months long, you get your certificate, you're in the career center, Within 12 months, you can sit the course again absolutely for free. Uh, and why people do that is to build up their portfolio to do the, the project again, because you will have built up a, a final project on the course. Or else if you get a job, you might want to go back and refresh your knowledge um, on, in the area and maybe use some of the things you're working on at work in the course again as a trial run for your new job. So when you do it a second time, you're almost getting a, a different kind of value out. Of it. So no, absolutely. If, we would encourage you to come if it's not with us, but absolutely um, uh, you can get into design without any prior knowledge. Okay, so I just want to come back to you, Stephen, on something else, which was, um, uh, it's, it's a term that you might, people might've heard, maybe they haven't, but um, design thinking, which is a way of working, isn't it, um, for, for designers? Maybe if you'd like to let um, the viewers know what design thinking is and maybe how it works. Design thinking, um, it's a concept that as far as I know, uh, came from Google and their various sprint workshops. And um, th in fact, if, if anybody's interested in that space, I know there's a weekly, there's a free Google weekly um, webinar that they do provide uh, once you subscribe to them. Google, Google are very good with um, sort of online tutorials, different things. But really, I suppose design thinking, another, another very good company that, that would really um, uh, would, would incentivize students to, to get, get further into design thinking is IBM. IBM would use that um, in spades. They, they do go around and they do various um, uh, open days and things, you know. Um, and basically what it is, is, is a method by which you will sort of break down the elements of a product or a um, service, uh, whereby you would actually visualize it in design steps. So the first thing obviously to think of uh, would be, for example, when we go to do a website, um, you know, if you take any kind of website, um, 
the first steps you would take any product or website particularly because it's an online platform it's a digital platform what you would do is sort of you know you know you would take a large whiteboard you'd simply take a crayon you'd start or a pencil marker you go up and you'd start mapping that out so what you're doing is you're you're mentalizing the process of how uh first of all you would engineer it and um, you know the first steps you would take what is the service you're providing um, and what is the what is the end goal of the product that or service that you want to do so you visualize it you map it you map it out on the wall and that's essentially design thinking in a very very global term um, but but essentially you know the steps to doing that uh, are very method methodological so what you'll do is you'll, you'll be you'll be learning as you go along the ins and outs, the very granular aspects of how to brainstorm, how to concept, and how to, I suppose, discover. In the discovery mode of any product design, that's where design thinking comes into play. And um, you know, design thinking, you know, is, is a strategic way. You know, um, previously, I suppose, prior to the, the sort of methodological approach, People would have just come up with a, an idea for a website, maybe taken a WordPress template and said, hey, I'm going to throw my, my concept together, just put that product out there. But they wouldn't be thinking about the sort of the user aspect of it. They'd be just thinking about, oh, well, you know, it's fast. I could throw it together. You know, I can do the design myself. But of course, you know, with design thinking, it goes much more in depth um, than that. And what it does is it covers so many aspects of the user's journey. So you're thinking more in terms of, you know, um, first of all, the feasibility of the concept. And if you do it correctly, if you actually map out your product idea, regardless of what that is, you should be able to determine after about uh, a day or two whether or not it's feasible. And that's the beauty of design thinking is if it's applied correctly and you do have the right methodology, um, well, you know, it can determine the viability of your business or not, essentially. Yeah. So, so when you mentioned there, there are different steps in the process. Can you, could you, what, can you let maybe let people know what they are? So, what, like, what would right. be the first step in, in your design thinking process for, for any product? Well, well, you know, um, if you take a group of people, um, you might, you know, as you go along, and, and I and I would fully recommend this for any design, uh, and any designer beginning in the industry was take take experience where you can get it. And particularly in companies that maybe even a startup, uh, a company, you know, that, that, that would enhance uh, and really encourage user experience in any aspect, uh, shape or form. Because from that, you'll meet people in the business who are focused on the service that they provide for the customer. So what, what, what I would say about, about that is when you actually sit down with these people that could be stakeholders, they could be, you know, um, you know, project managers they could be BAs uh, whatever the service is that they provide when you get into a room with those people and actually get a piece of paper or even a whiteboard and just start sketching your ideas brainstorm the idea that would be the first step and, and that actually would take a few sessions so you know there's always companies will always come up with concepts themselves as the products that they would actually advertise and want to get out there in the market but your job would be as a designer to sort of you know break it down break it down on paper and maybe show them okay so this is your concept is it an interface does it look like this how many steps does it take the customer to be able to get to what they want to get out of this product or if it's a more global product an app an entire app well then you'd have to break that down into tiny chunks so each aspect of the discovery process will need to go through the design thinking process too now remember, you don't have to get into a room with anybody. You can actually do this by yourself. You can actually take a whiteboard or a piece of paper and a piece of, you know, you know, just sketch out your idea. Sketch right there. And what we often do on the early stage with any kind of design concept is we use, uh, we use, we we literally uh, mind map it. So we would we would actually make a very loose based sketch. User goes in here. User does this. Uh, and then there'll be a question mark. What does user do here? How do we get back to this? And how do you get to stage B, C, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really a process that you need to go through. It can, it can be as in depth or as global as you want it to be. But of course, um, I would encourage anybody to go off and have a look on, uh, particularly on LinkedIn, 
or on uh, Google, they have free courses and there's some fantastic courses out there about design thinking. Uh, but the more granular, granular aspects of it come down to the context of the product that you're designing for. Yeah, very good. So, so really, it, 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 you almost start with, the, with, the, with the, um, the design, the problem you're solving and almost reverse engineer it. Is that, is that kind of the way, the way it is? One of the best ways to describe this is blue sky thinking. Um, is very often where any project begins. And even if it comes from bigger uh, sort of, you know, corporates or, you know, like large financial institutions, very often, no, they base a lot of the concepts that they have on their competition. Or, you know, uh, if you have a concept and you want a product to market, any products that you put out there to market, using design thinking methodologies gives you that um, ability to both see your opportunities and your constraints um, on, on your design if you're using it in the correct way. So if you break down your, your, your concept or any design, how do you begin with that uh, product? How do we market it? How do we, how do we achieve the step the user needs to be able to convert it into a sale? So things like that. Um, and again, it's context, but very often you'll see on these uh, courses, they'll take a dummy product or uh, system and they'll break it into small chunks so you can understand the methodology behind it. Yeah. Okay. So what would you have um, advice from, I mean, you're obviously now a very experienced professional in this area. What, what advice would you have for people who are thinking about becoming a UX UI designer or maybe for you new UX UI designers? So what, what kind of advice would you give them starting off their career? I, I would say, you know, um, you know, the first thing I would say is, you know, like, you know, UX, UX and UI are terms you would have probably heard buzzwords almost, user experience, user experience design, UXD, uh, you know, all of these words that are going around, you, you'll see them very often. Most people have Apple devices uh, in Ireland, at least at the moment. Uh, Apple is probably one of the most popular iPhone. Everybody has an iPhone. Some people have iWatches uh, or actually Apple watches, as they call them officially. Uh, and some people have, you know, um, yeah, Android. And it's just like that. But what our familiarity is, is when we're using our devices, is we're not even aware of it. You know, you pick it up, you use Instagram, you use Facebook. And all of these products that we're using, if you think of the four or five apps you might use on a daily basis, ask yourself, why do I keep going back to them? You know, personally, um, I'm a big fan of SoundCloud. I, I listen to my music. I like my music. But the way that SoundCloud is engineered is very, very strong in terms of user experience. Um, if you are interested in music and you like your music like myself, have a look at SoundCloud. Ask yourself, how is it engineered? You know, um, so what keeps people coming back to apps? You know, Spotify is another good example. They're very, very good. And actually, Spotify have their ear very close to the ground. They'll be looking at all of the data from the usability, the statistics of their users, and they'll be listening to the commentary that people make. They'll be watching where people tap on their screen to be able to understand what it is that makes that tick. You know, so as a user experience designer, when you step into this world, I would say, you know, the first thing to understand is, you know, like, if you see yourself as, as you know, I want to be that guy designing for Apple or the, that girl, and you're out there and you want to make a career of this, you know, stop to think about the me aspect of it. Start to think about the team. How can you contribute to bigger teams? Because you can, you can trust me on this one. Um, the best of uh, the, the web um, is, is basically run by, by dynamic teams that operate in a very, very interesting way. Uh, sphere uh, of influence with both their de de developers and and their and their colleagues, stakeholders around them, who who constantly ask them to perform uh, fantastic things to create these fantastic apps. And um, but really, I suppose you know the the point I'm making is if you are a beginner, it, it's more to do with you know trying to get your trying to get your understanding right of whatever industry that you choose to go into, you know? So for myself, for example, my background would be more FinTech, you know, sort of financial services, insurance, et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, and it's good as a UX designer to have a sort of a forte. I would say, focus your energy on one aspect 
and maybe have a look at see what your previous experience brings to that. Some designers are probably better with user testing. They're fantastic people to interview users. Uh, they can they can ask uh, more. They can get into the, the nitty gritty of the cognitive effort involved in, in apps, and they can get more in, interested in, in, in sort of the the psychological aspects of it. You know, and um, you know. Um, and, and some other people are just good at, at, at interface design. So UI design, uh, where they just focus solely on um, interacting, act, interaction with the, with, the, with the app or the uh, website, how do users interact with forums, you know, um, and, and that's a niche in itself. So you have to ask yourself when you look at UX design, the more you read, the more you get interested in it, ask yourself what you think you will be good at and focus on your own strengths and what you think you can bring to that. And I say that will get you on, on, on a good path. That's some, some really good advice there. And, and maybe just to build on that, um, it's a question we sort of ask at, at all of our events about the, the job titles um, generally is, what would you say are the top two or three attributes of a really great designer? I would say the first attribute would be empathy. Um, firstly, and directly for the user, uh, the user is always first in terms of design. You know what I mean by that is, you know, any concept that you put together, put that on the board. We're always thinking about what's what's best for user. You know, now you will be in a situation where ultimately you're working for a company um, who who have have a stamp that they want to put for their their brand or their business. You know, and, and every business is the same. It's the business we will think first. But we want. We want our products out there and we want users using our apps. But how do you do that? Well, the how you do that is, is you empathize with what the user wants. Well, you know, the user wants to use their banking app in a certain way. The user wants to use their music app in this way. And we have to listen to the user. And only by listening and empathizing with what they want. And the way you do that is you, often you send out surveys or you, you, you retrieve data. Um, you know, and Google Analytics, for example, is one of the best tools you see for any website or any product out there. Very often it will give you great data as to know as to what users want from a product or a service. Um, and very often any really company that you go into these days, just to look at Google Analytics over the year, what the users are doing on their sites to be able to understand whether or not their product works. So um, empathy, I would say, would be number one. And um, number two, I suppose, you know, I, I, I would I would recommend to anybody starting, you know, to kind of take it as a 60-40 approach to, to ego-based uh, design. Um, empathy doesn't just run for customers, but it also runs for teams. How you interact with your fellow players in the team and uh, what your role brings, you know, essentially, you know, there's a lot of... Um, in companies, there's a, there's a lot of people involved in projects and things, and very often you'll come up and there'll be challenges and struggles. And I think some of that is the sort of um, resilience that you can bring with, with your own practice, you know. Um, so empathy and resilience, I would say, and I would say also, you know, belief, because you've got to believe in your design. You've got to believe in what you are um, putting out there. And um, now, there'll always be an, an aspect of ego about what you do design, because essentially that's your domain. You know, what, what companies will look to you for is leadership in your own belief in what you're designing for them. Is that the right solution? Um, the vast majority of the time, when you come to a team and you have a team, your, your, your fellow team members will tell you whether or not your design um, suits the problem that you're trying to solve. So... Um, I do think that they're probably the three, the three biggest attributes that you can bring to any role. Now that that's really good. So it was empathy, resilience, uh, and belief. Yeah, um, and I mean, like, I suppose realistically, you could break those down, and and there's a lot more to it than that. But you, I yeah. think if you, if you can understand my my, my uh, approach to this, um, I mean, that's from my own personal speaking. But when you each designer will have their own uh, challenges as they go along. Some will find, you know, some aspects of what you're doing more difficult than others. And you'll never master everything in UX. It's just too big. It's too too profound. Yeah. But what you can do is you can master your own uh, craft, what it is that your, your forte is, you know. For me, I always relied on my UI experience and what I can bring to the visual aspect of it. But in fact, 
when you get deeper into UX, you'll find that that often is the icing on the cake. And the more important aspects are the deeper engineering functional aspects, the cogs of, of, the, of the, 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 the mechanism, how everything works together rather than just the, 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 the nice, pretty in, interfaces that you, you interact with, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, look, um, I, I think we could, that, that's some really good, um, good advice there from Stephen. And if anyone is watching, if you wanted to get any last minute questions in, now would be the time to ask them because we're going to wrap up here for the evening. And what I'll do is just maybe let you know that our UX UI design course will be kicking off at the end of July. And um, so we'll be having that around the, the 28th of July, I believe, as the first one. And then it runs for six, six weeks. It's three evenings per week between half six till half nine. It goes three times a week. So it's quite intensive. And um, it's all online uh, with a lecturer. So as I said, Stephen's one of our, our lecturers. And um, it's maybe 50, 60 percent theory. And then you're working on projects yourself, practical. So you're learning about all of the different concepts about as, as some of them we mentioned tonight from research to testing, to design thinking, and also using some of the systems. So if you were interested in taking part, or you want to have a consultation call with us, a career consultation call, maybe talk about where you're going and, and how any of these courses might fit your career journey, then you can get us at dublincoding.ie, or you can email me at luke at dublincoding.ie. There's also the info one, but email me directly is fine. Um, and please let us know. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn and Instagram, so you can also contact us through those channels. Um, you can also go to our website and download any of the brochures or organize a call through the website as well. So look, we, we'd love to hear from you and, and talk about how you might change your career and become a UX designer just like Stephen. I'll maybe hand over to Stephen now if you had any final thoughts for, to anyone watching who might be thinking about taking the step into a, a new career as a UX UI designer. Sure. Um, well, the only thing I would say is, you know, um, you know, follow, you know, follow your, the courage of your conviction and then just try and get into it. If you do jump into that, I, I, I will be happy to walk you through those sort of more granular elements of design. And I guess, you know, if, if you were, the, if you were an aspiring designer, um, I would say, you know, um, start looking at all of the, 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 the there's a, a plethora of online um, books and webinars you can get into right now and uh, but uh, i would be delighted to take you on the next steps if you are choosing to be a ux or ui designer um, on the course and um, thank you for your time great okay thank you very much and thank you everybody for watching and stephen of course thank you for your time this evening uh, we'll we'll say good good evening bye-bye okay, thanks bye